Hi everybody, this is uh, um, Marisol Medina and I'm going to create this uh, small uh, video to show you how to do the chessboard if you haven't done so. So I'm going to follow the instructions and um, the guideline that I provide you um, on how to start. It is not totally complete. Uh, it's just a guideline because um, I want you to actually uh, use the knowledge that you uh, acquired um, during your readings and the videos that um, I provided. So we um, need to have JSBean um, open and then in here I'm going to start by uh, doing the, uh, the chessboard. So if we follow the guideline, the first thing that we would see is that we need to create rows uh, for the chessboard. So let's go back to the image that I provided you. So it has a heading. We're gonna do these um, last. And then in here we have the chessboard. So we are gonna start by creating these single rows. So we are gonna use divs. And divs, they are just an HTML tag that allows us to group blog elements, HTML elements that later on we can change their style by using CSS. We are not allowed to use tables anymore for layout. Tables are not accessible and they are not um, responsive um, by definition. So we are going to start by just copy and pasting these HTML tags for the rows. And here I'm going to explain a little bit more what is this and why I'm using, for example, class. So class is an attribute for HTML tags. All the attributes start on the opening tag and they need to have a value. All the values are always using quotes. So classes allows us to define a style that can be applied multiple times for the same class while IDs are unique. Class can be repeated, IDs are um, unique. So for this um, row, we will have eight rows for our chessboard. So now we're going to define this style in CSS. So let's go back to our guideline and I'm going to copy and paste this style. Now I have opened my CSS and if you notice this class start with a period. All classes always start with a period on our CSS style. And I already defined some margin for the left side and some margin for the right side. And also I do have my position that is relative to my document. Now the other thing that I need to define is the style for the clear section or the clear class. So why do I have a clear class? The reason is because every time we create a new row, we need to start all over again with our style and we need to clear the floating. And you will see that floating um, attribute is used on every single cell. So I'm gonna go back to my uh, guideline and I'm gonna copy this style for the clear. You will soon see how this is affecting our style. I'm just going to move this comment above my row so it keeps my code organized. And also, I'm going to just change the title of my um, HTML document. I'm going to say chessboard. Now, we just have the first row, so we are going to add every single cell to it. And in the guideline, I already defined um, the pattern for the cell. So I'm just going to copy this part in here because I already have the rows. And I'm going to put it just inside of the row. So again, we have um, divs that are going to use as JAS containers. And I do have a class white and a class black. And the reason, again, why we are using class is because they can be repeated. And I also provided the initial style for those classes, for the white and for the black. So I'm going to copy in here. And I'm going to explain a little bit. You already see how they are changing. So one interesting thing that I wanted to um, 
want you to, to do is to recognize that we have all these attributes that are, are exactly the same in both styles. The only thing different about the white and the black is just the background color. So on CSS, it allows us to um, put all the attributes that are similar to a class together. We just need to separate the class by comma. So instead of having two different classes here with the same attributes repeated, I'm just going to put them together in here. So I'm just going to uh, add the black class here, and I'm just going to remove those attributes that are common here. But just notice that I also need to remove the background color from here because otherwise it's going to apply to both. And it's always wise just to have that um, class defined in here for the color. So now we have everything that is the same in both classes except for the background color. So now that we have this first row, the only thing that we need to do is just copy and paste the first row. So I'm just going to copy the code. and create a second row. I'm going to change the comment here, second row, and you see the rows are exactly the same with the same color. So what I just need to do is to alternate the color. So rather than start with um, the class white, I'm going to start with a class black. So I just need to make sure that I finish with my class white. Okay, pretty cool. Now we have two rows. The rest is just the same. So I just can copy my class one and two. I just need to do that three times. So I have now two for six. So I just need another one. And here it is. I just have my my chessboard. So the rest of it is that I'm adding the header and the footer. So on the guideline, I provided the um, the code for the footer. So I'm going to copy and paste this code that already has the images for the validator. And I'm going to add them at the end. So you can see here how the images for the validators have been added and how I also have here the ID footer. So I'm using ID instead of class because the ID is going to be unique. And I can reference the class on CSS by using hashtag. So period like this period is for classes, hashtags are for IDs. And I just can copy and paste my footer my style for the footer here. Now let's look how it looks in here. So notice that I have a border here because I'm using this property border. And if you look also at your cells, all the cells have this border. You can remove it if you want. So those are the other um, customization that you can, you can add. So let's see what we have um, left. Oh, the container. So the reason why we need to have um, another ID, another box that is going to group the container is to control the margin for the whole chessboard. And by doing that, we really want to center um, the container and we are using some margin here. So notice that I separated every single um, part of the margin, you can write the same just in one single line where 
the top is going to be your first value the second value is going to be the right then um, the bottom and then uh, the left so let me just copy this id and make sure that we are going to add it at the beginning of the first row so my container starts here so i need to make sure that the container finishes before the footer so i'm gonna close my container it is always a good idea to document your code so i'm gonna write in of container so you know where your code starts and end so now that I have the container I just can go back and copy the style for my container and I'm gonna do it at the at the bottom so as you can see now I have some margin on the left margin on the right margin on the top and margin at the bottom so the last part on this one is to add um, the title or the heading and that goes just above my container so I have my chessboard and I have some customization for my heading for my title just gonna copy those CSS styles in here and I'm not gonna go in detail explaining every single attribute you can look up online or in your text um, textbook and the um, there are other customizations that we want to add for example if i want to change the font i already chose a font from open font library i just need to have that link on my head section of the document and i just need to apply that style on the title so i'm gonna copy that style and put it as attributes on my title so I have a different font just for the title now I'm gonna skip uh, for this video the images and I'm just gonna add the background for my body so I already chose um, an image that I'm gonna reference in here and usually this style for the body you find it at the beginning of your CSS document and this is it so you now have a chessboard now if you want to change the style for these you can um, center those elements so you can go back to your footer so we have the div ID for the footer and you can center those um, those images so we can use a property text align and we can center those properties so you can see how they are centered and if you want to actually let's see remove the border you can do that and um, we can leave it like that or if you want to add the same background color that you have for the header for the title we can also do that so where it's my background color is a light yellow so i can add the same color for the background so notice that i have a gap in here and a gap in here and this is because i have a margin of 10 pixels around so if i just want to have the margin at the top i can just leave that margin to the top at 10 pixels and also I if I want to remove some padding I just can um, leave the padding to the top and I need to um, find out why do I still have an extra 
extra space. So I'm going to stop right here because um, this application only allows me to have 15 minutes. So I'm going to create a second part just for the rest.